In this video, let's take a look at removing this upper intake plenium manifold from the Nissan VQ35DE engine found in the Nissan Pathfinder, Nissan L Grand, or the Infiniti QX4. This engine can also be found in related Nissan make vehicle, but it does not feature this upper intake plenium manifold. This upper intake plenium manifold also features a power valve for induction. Let's start the removal by disconnecting this air duct from the mass airflow sensor, its vacuum line, air breather line. The first part to be removed is this accelerator cable linkage to the throttle body. But we must first detach this inlet air duct. So there is two different ways for disconnecting this cable. There is the adjuster nut that can be released for releasing the cable. This will change the adjustment in the cable and it's not recommended to do so. The best way is to simply releasing the 10 millimeter bolt that holds the throttle cable and its bracket to the plenium. Once the 10 millimeter bolt has been removed, then you can pass that cable around, releasing its shackle. Replacing the 10 millimeter bolt in the current location is the best way to safeguard against losing the nut. Next step is to disconnect the EVAP solenoid and its hoses. So the best way for releasing these would be to detach the hose and remove these four 10 millimeter bolts simply replacing the evap solenoid and its connection hose to the side Once all the 10 on your bolt has been removed, then the hose, the torsion clamp can be removed and the hose can be detached, releasing the EVAP solenoid. So this is a volume control solenoid. This basically takes the gasoline vapor from the gas tank and inject it into the manifold so it could be burned in the combustion chamber. If this EVAP solenoid is not used what will end up happening is the gas tank will eventually develop excess amount of pressure from the gasoline vapor and that could cause an explosion. It is always important that the EVAP system remain functioning on the vehicle. A check engine light that signifies a problem with the EVAP system will mostly prevent the EVAP system from operating, causing gas vapors to build up, leading to explosion. So we have to disconnect this harness and the TPS sensors plug. We have two of them. Now we have to disconnect this hose clamp for vacuum source. This connection of these two rubber hose is also required for detaching the upper intake plenium from the engine. 
these two rubber holes basically circulate coolant up into the throttle body heater block which is also located next to this idle air control valve what basically happens here is that in the early morning when the engine is started the coolant will circulate its warm liquid up into the throttle body heating the throttle body as the air induction into the engine it will absorb that heat from the coolant promoting supreme or better combustion this is only required for cold weather condition so if the vehicle or the engine is being operated in tropical condition it will be best to bypass this throttle body heater block and connecting these two rubber hose together. If that air temperature is to fall below 55 or 35 degree, 32 degree Fahrenheit, the engine will most likely encounter combustion problem or idling problem. So eliminating of these two rubber hose from the heater block is critical for tropical condition and not in cold weather condition. The understanding that must be gained from this throttle body heater block is that when the coolant become acidic or corrosive it will most likely eat away at the gasket or the casting in the throttle body. That coolant will then begin to leak into induction system that's inside inside there and this will cause damage to the engine Here we can see the hose will become difficult to remove since they have aged onto the fixture. The best way to get at it is simply applying some lube at its connection, playing with that hose, making sure it does not become punctured with the tool. Puncturing of the hose is one of the most misleading things to happen during the course of your mechanic endeavor. When that hose become punctured, if it should be a vacuum hose, it will make the engine run most difficult or operate most improperly. So you must make sure the hose is not damaged by the tool. And as we can see, we have some form of corrosive powder coming out of this passageway. So this heater block for the throttle body will have to be investigated to see if it has corrosion buildup. As always, it is never safe to fix or work on a engine that is hot in temperature. Never disconnect any coolant hose from a engine that is hot in temperature. At this point, when you're ready to disconnect these two throttle body heater hose you're gonna need a cloth to place in that area so when the hose is disconnected the coolant can be observed by the cloth and the hose will immediately be plugged <coughs> by one of the bolts from the intake plenium manifold this will prevent the flowing of coolant on the top of the valve cover leading into the spark plug once the coolant develop around the spark plug, the engine will experience misfire during its operation cycle. So preventing coolant from entering down into the spark plug 
and on the electrical connector for the coil is most important. The only disadvantage to these heater hose for the throttle body is that it could sometimes corrode the gasket and cause coolant to leak into the throttle body, hydrolocking the engine, causing damage, preventing it from cranking and starting. So since we have seen how this corrosion came out of here, we will have to separate this idle air control block or this throttle body heater block to see if the gasket is corroded or its internal cavity is damaged. We are first going to start with the detachment of the upper half of the intake plenium. The plenium must be disassembled in two halves for it is impossible to disassemble as a one-piece unit since two of its fastener bolts are below the upper half of the intake plenium. We must also remember to use some penetrating oil on these fasteners when getting ready to remove them. This will prevent the threads from damaging. Also, you do not want to use a power tool for removing and installing of the nuts and bolts because the power from the tool will most likely damage the aluminum threads for the casting. During the release of these three bolts on the corner, the upper intake half of the plenium will most likely have a tendency to lift, showing that it's being separated from the lower half. So we must remember the location where we remove our nuts and bolts. So we must remember the length of the bolt when installing, two is longer than one, and we have two nuts. So we want to get a good look at the inside, basically an inspection. That was the upper half of the intake plenium that was removed. It is now time to remove the lower half of the intake plenium by detaching these two center bolts, the one on the corner and in the front. First thing first is to always apply the penetrating lube oil. Then we will use our 12 millimeter six point deep socket with an extension to get down on that front bolt for releasing 
same thing for the rear. Actually, it's a nut and not a bolt. The bolts are in the center. So these center bolts are much tighter. And will require penetrating oil to seep down onto the thread for further removal. This is to prevent the aluminum or aluminum from becoming damaged by its thread. Let's continue and turn this bolt since the oil has penetrated the threads. So we want to take our time removing this because turning the bolt will basically generate heat down on the threads leading to stripping away of the aluminum. So this here is released. Perfect, that's what we wanted. You can see down here is already saturated with the penetrating oil just like we intended. Very important that you do not use power tool on aluminum engine with steel bolts. The steel bolt threads will most likely damage the aluminum. Let's remove the two nuts. So you're going to see you have to reach down here and get that with your finger because it has a shaft that's unthreaded. This is the last nut or fastener for removal. Okay, so the front part is loose but the back needs some attention. The additional attention is most likely required for this PVC hose that goes in to the right side valve cover. The last fixture or part to be removed for detaching the lower half of the plenium is this bracket that has three bolts, one attaching to the engine block, cylinder head, and two on the lower half of the plenium. Before detaching, it is always best and better to detach this PVC hose piping from the right side valve cover before lifting the lower half of the plenium away with that tubing and the PCV valve. Failure to detach that PCV valve from the valve cover and trying to lift this plenium off will most likely break the fixture at the rubber hose or damage the PCV valve garment which is inserted inside of the valve cover. Here we will notice that PCV hose and it is not flexible for removal. So we will have to remove a 10 millimeter bolt that holds this steel tube on the bottom half of the plenium and at the rear of the plenium. The difficulty in removing these two 10 millimeter bolts will most likely be this one in the rear since it's going to be unable to see, but you're not going to be able to get a 10 millimeter socket onto that bolt because this fuel piping rail prevented from doing so. Okay, the best way to get to this bolt after applying the penetrating lubricant is to position your 10 millimeter wrench like this and pulling up just to snag it loose and then it should be able to free by hand so when the engine is in the vehicle this part might be a little difficult because you will have to lean over the radiator laying on top of the engine for removal of this bolt which is a the last 10 millimeter bolt for removal will most likely require some penetrating lube to ease its release so during the process of releasing this bolt you're going to need a 10 millimeter combination wrench and you're going to have to secure the box end of the wrench onto the bolt and you're going to have to pick an angle 
So in order to get an angle on this bolt, we'll have to remove this number cylinder coil. So that will be unplugged. Then we have another 10 millimeter bolt to remove. So this is all to prevent your hands from getting cut during the process of one tightening the 10 millimeter bolt. So basically this is the best position for the wrench. But what we want to do is we want to take this PVC hose from the right side valve cover out of its provision hole. Okay, so all of these brackets are going to require removal with a 10 millimeter bolt so we can gain clearance. So we have to be careful in the direction this bolt is going to be turned. We want to make sure we do not turn it in the wrong direction because then and again it could damage the threads in the aluminum or the aluminium. So this is going to require removal of the glove to get your fingers in there. Now this is going to place you in an awkward position since you're laying on top of the vehicle. It will most likely require your right hand. We must make sure we don't drop this bolt into the spark plug hole. All right, let's take a look at disconnecting this PVC because we do not want to break this hardened plastic tube. We just want to pull on this line, releasing it from the valve cover. Attaching the right side of the plenium, you will notice these two 12 millimeter bolts with this bracket, which will need removal. So in order to remove this bracket, we have one 12 millimeter bolt and two 12 millimeter bolt on the top. So we're first going to release the bottom and then we're going to go to the top. This bracket must be completely removed for the plenium to be able to lift off the engine. So the only reason you will need to remove this upper plenium is because you need to change the fuel injector or to release these bolts on the top of the transmission bell housing in the event you should need to remove the engine leaving the transmission behind. Also, if these gaskets are to leak will require disassembling of the upper plenium. You also never want to place any tool on top of the lower plenium because the nuts and bolts could fall into the ports. Always want to plug all the ports with some paper towel to prevent objects and insects from entering the engine manifold. Okay, so now we can grab this and lift it off nice and easy. But first, we have to disconnect this. So you see how difficult that can become? That's because of the heat caused the hose to become adhesive against the power valve port. So let's lift this off. I want to take a look at inside there. So you can see those are the flaps for the power valve. Let me take a close look. 
inside of the runners we can see that this engine does not show evidence of a 30,000 mile this engine approximately is about 70 to 80,000 miles and it's not 35,000 miles like the seller told us during the auction so here are the fuel injectors this is a bypass hose it's a connecting hose from the left to the right valve cover that's for a breeder to evacuate all the fumes from inside of the engine that is our PCB connection this is our breeder for the inlet duct upon investigation we could see that someone was previously down here because there's a part over there is a Nissan tag so this engine was definitely serviced or this plenium was removed previously definitely this engine does not have 35,000 mile or 40,000 this is more of an 80,000 mile engine also you can notice the hoses are still from Nissan so that's all evidence so this has complete the removal of the intake plenium for the Nissan VQ 35 DE and like I've said before the only reason you're going to need to remove this plenium is if you're replacing the engine and these bolts will need detaching so removing the plenium will gain access to these bolts for removal also if the injectors is to become faulty with a DTC code the intake plenium will also require removal we could also see this hose starting to become cracked that will also require removal of the plenium for replacement so this is the end and see you again for when we have to remove this outlet changing its direction onto this side like we have the pipe already mounted a secure placement of the upper half of the intake planium is most important by placing it on a cardboard surface always placing a rag in the area where that evap spout is located because if that spout is to become broken you will most likely have to replace it from the inside by bonding it this JB weld also this power valve basically is what control the length of the air travel inside of the plenium when the valve is closed as in its current position the air will travel in the throttle body all the way to this end straight across down into the engine when the valve is open like that the air will simply come in the throttle body and dump right into the engine from these ports shortening its travel this length and shortening dynamic of the air is what continuously help produce power during the RPM band of the engine for example at a low RPM the engine will require a short runner thereby having the power valve open for the air to enter the engine as the engine gaining RPM and miles per hour speed this power valve will close this runner increasing the travel of the air into the engine speeding up its ability to fill the combustion chamber producing more power at high and extreme RPM here again upon inspection when we look at the metal shim gasket we could see its coating it's peeling off at where it exposed and is still attached in areas where require sealing this is also evidence that the engine is approximately 80 
the 70,000 mile based upon investigation of these gasket if the engine was over a hundred thousand mile most of these coating will be removed or peeling from the metal shim gasket joint to prevent the misplacements of nuts and bolt or from falling into the engine we will most likely need to plug these ports with some paper towel also same thing need to be done on the exhaust side of the engine because since the engine will be sitting for almost two to three months we want to prevent moisture from entering inside the cylinder at this point we will reassemble the intake plenium upper and lower half together placing all the nuts and bolt in position to prevent loss of those fasteners and refresh the memory of the location for proper bolt installation. We must also never forget these two 10 millimeter bolt for the PCV valve tube that connects on the... Let's take an inspection look of the throttle body heater block and the first part we want to perform our inspection is we want to remove this plug by this Phillips screw. So the first thing that's going to happen when you insert your Phillips screw, you're going to have to use a mallet and just tap on the screw. This is to break up the threads, any corrosive element that may held or hold the thread in the casting so this will require pressure onto the screw and turning it off fortunately we are lucky at removing this screw most of the time it will become stripped and will require a flat screwdriver if the flat screwdriver does not have enough torque you will need one with this hex on the shank then you could place an 11 millimeter on there for leverage for turning. Okay, now when we hold this up like that, we can see inside of this heater block, there is a thermos spring with its O-ring joint seal and there's also a plunger in here and you can see all the contamination on the end of this plunger and when we look in there you can also see some form of buildup okay so what this is this is a thermos element spring which is sensitive to engine coolant temperature so when the engine is cold, this thermos spring will basically retract this plunger away from this port, promoting flow of coolant through these two spout. Once the coolant reaches maximum temperature, which will be engine temperature, the spring will expand, pushing this plunger forward. And this little piece right here, this plug, will basically insert itself on the other side of this port on the inside here when you take a look in there you can see there's a port for this valve to shut off and open so this heater block does not constantly flow coolant the engine coolant does not constantly flow through this throttle body heater block. Instead, it's controlled by this thermos element. So blocking it off may not serve a great purpose, but the fact that the hot coolant is coming up to this point and saturating this part of the throttle body, it's a sign that the throttle body will become hot from the coolant. So. In tropical condition, it will be best to simply bypass these two holes by connecting the rubber holes together. So this will all have to be cleaned up and put back together again based on our inspection. 
This engine does not have 30,000 miles. This engine is close to 100,000 miles because this is a lot of contaminant for an engine that claims to have 100,000 miles. And this is what the eBay seller told us about this engine when it sold. Take a look at the amount of contaminant that's built up in this area. I just want to pass the tool rung in there. Okay, so it's not as bad as we thought it was. This could be cleaned out and refurbished for operation. Take a look at the valve. I just want to scrape it. This is plastic. So you can see we have a large sum of buildup. 